Hello, welcome to our used 2017 Rockwood Rue 183. We're going to start right in the back bumper here. So you just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there. Inside of that back bumper, you're going to find your sewer hose. Just take note of those two ears right there. That's all be hooking it up to your sewer system. And then the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here, just to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that little bit fresher for you. And that cap just presses into place. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you're going to find these stabilizer jacks here. So what they're going to do is they're just going to run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. And I'll just get rid of all that bouncy sweat that you can see you got in the unit right now. Keep things firm while you're out camping. Right around the corner there, you're going to find this port here. So as you pop that open, you'll notice there's a little notch in the bottom corner here. It's going to line up with that notch there. You're just going to kind of press it in, give it a little eighth turn, and it'll lock into place. And then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. Following the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end here. Most campsites are going to have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug into a standard household outlet, you've got the power to do so. Up from there, we've got your exterior shower here. So you'll get a key just like this guy there. You can stick it on in, open her up, and you get hot and cold water, three foot hose. Some dogs out getting muddy, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Just tucking that hose back away, wrap it around the knobs there, tuck her back up, lock her down. Another step forward, and we've got your sewer system out here. So you're just gonna kind of press that cap in, give it a little turn, you can pop it off of there, and you can see it's got the exact same ears that your sewer hose had. So that'll attach the same way, you're pressing it in, turning it, locks into place, and there you go. On the right, you get a black valve, so that black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilets. It's of course, gonna be our dirtiest water. We'll be dumping that first. And then on the left here, kind of right in the back, you've got that gray valve. Gray valve controls the gray tank. So we'll dump that last, back of ice filled from your uh, sinks as well as your shower. So typically cleaner water, just keep things that bit fresher. You will see the one bunk end here, so I'm only going to open up one of the bunk ends just because they do all work the exact same and they don't really impede us inside. Right here, this little port there, as you pop that open, you've got a cable inlet on the left, a satellite inlet on the right, so you just be taking a coax cable, plug it into there, fire up your TV location. Ahead from there, we've got your fresh water tank. You're just going to take a water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, and it fills up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there. Hot water tank here, so you just get that keyway, you're just going to line it up and it pops on open. Your control for turning it on with electricity is just down in the bottom corner here. Just going to turn that on, it turns it on with electricity. For turning it on with propane, there's a switch inside of the unit, so once we get in there and turn it on with propane, I will go over a reset procedure, and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Before we ever turn it on, whether it be with electricity or with propane, we just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure we get a shot of water coming out. A shot of water coming out is just letting you know that tank is full, it's safe to fire it up, and you're not going to damage anything by doing so. If it is not full, you just want to make sure that you got your valves turned on and your water system turned on as well. And then just locking that keyway down to close it. Um, fresh water tank drain is just kind of right back there. So you can see the wet spot on the floor straight up from there. You get your drain. It's just that little valve. You're going to turn it to close it off. Storage compartments up front here. So pops on open with the key there. And you can see this customer's opted to go with the weight distribution hitch. So we just got that stored in here for him, as well as the Bluetooth brake controller. Right by that, you're also gonna find a water hose and inside of there, you'll find your park adapter. So your 30 amp short cord into there, 15 amp to a standard household outlet. The previous owner did also have X chocks for the unit. So we've just left those in here for you as well. Basically just lock between the wheels to hold things firm. Also in the front here, you've got access to your water pump there. So if you look at a winter as the unit, you'll be coming right into here. There is also a water filter back there. So this wrench right here is what you can turn that water filter housing on and off with. And then right back here, you also get this little jack there. So that guy's running all of our stabilizers. It does have a three quarter inch end on the end of it just for running those guys up and down. So up here, this is actually an antifreeze inlet. So once it comes winterizing time, you'll be taking your water hose, plug it into there, and just to have the other end running into a antifreeze jug, and turn on your pump, and it'll draw out of that, pressurize the lines, and you just run those through as normal. That right there is your city water connection, so just to take in your water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, and that will pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Around front, you can see you get the one little scare light there. This battery box beside it is of course housing your batteries as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back that guy's charging for you also through your seven pin to your tow vehicle same bunk end up front here the two knobs for your propane cover here if you just turn those off back them off you get access to the valve for the video to turn this off and you can see the changeover in front here it says green just letting us know that we've got a 
pressure in the system or we've got propane in the system. The arrow's pointing over here, so we're running off of this tank. That tank's now open. If you have the tank open and that guy were to go red, it's just letting you know this guy's now empty. So at that point, you just close it off, flip over to the other tank, and run off of this one while you get the other one filled. On the other side, you do have a solar panel plug in, so you just take a two pound plug, plug it into there, it charges your batteries. Stove vent here, so of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you just make sure this flap here is opened up so that our fan inside can evacuate our fumes. To close it off, you're just pressing it into place, you hear those clicks, and that'll just prevent any dust from kicking up in there. Here are two exterior speakers here. Straight down from there, you're gonna find the exhaust for your furnace. So, if you're ever running your furnace, you just make sure that's not blocked off, it does get hot. Service port for your fridge here, right up above that is a mount for a TV. So I'm not too sure where the other half is, but basically just a couple of knobs sit into there, slides down into place and locks in. Jeep right protected outlet. And beside that, you've got a cable and satellite outlet. This is a propane outlet. So quick connect here, so pulls on out. And then you basically just be closing off that valve and then you can open up that collar, attach your whatever propane appliance you're looking to attach, lock it down, and then you can open up that flow. With that valve opened up, you cannot undo that quick connect, so just kind of an added safety. Behind from there, you're gonna find a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after you've gone and dumped your black tank and you know for a fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, that's some debris inside of that tank just hanging between the probes causing a misread. So you're just gonna take your water hose and plug it into here, open up your black tank valve, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank, getting rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. In the back corner here, you can't really see them because they're tucked right behind the skirt, but you do have low point drains back here. Just a couple of valves that you'd be, or a couple of caps, sorry, that you'd be unscrewing. And then uh, just drains out the water system. In the back here, you've got your spare tire, of course. In the center, you do have this little access to the storage compartment. Pretty well just empty right now. Straight up top and center, you do have a pre-wired mount for an observation camera. And then for the bunk room back here, you're just going to take this handle, pull it down. Of course, making sure it's unlocked. Same thing on the other side. And then they just kind of kick out. You're going to walk this guy down slowly. And that's it, really. Simply outside. And we'll make our way inside of the unit. This is handle to stop 90 degrees and it falls into place. We can open up the door. Door is on a gas strut, so it will not open all the way kind of just to prevent you from hitting the awning arm there. For the steps, you're gonna grab that bottom step and pull it straight out, flip that top step over, and then we'll make our way inside. So first things first, right on your right, we've got your fire extinguisher, so that's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Up on the wall here, we've got your kind of control panels. In the bottom left corner here, we've got your interior lights, turns on all of your interior lights. In the center there, you've got that porch light, turns on the orange one on the side, and then your awning light does the LED strip. For your awning itself, that's the switch right here. You're gonna press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, you're gonna see a little weight flap come down as well as the gray of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna to wanna to stop. So that flap's a little sticky today, but there's a tube, so we'll stop right there. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna be holding some water. So what you're gonna do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just going to pull it in, lock down that knob, and then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. Well, if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you ever bring them back in, though, you just want to make sure they're loosened off, back fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything. And we'll make our way back in. When you're bringing your awning out or back in, you just want to make sure that your fabric is staying over top of that tube, just that you're not holding water. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in just because it catches all that wind and you do run the risk of bending your arm. There we go. So right up top here on the right, we've got your water heater electric control. So of course you have the switch outside, so you could just leave that one on, turn this one off, and then you just kind of have that dual control. In the center here, we've got your water heater with gas. We turn that switch on, you get that little red light there letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence has started, that light will go out and it'll try that three times. If after that third try it hasn't fired up, it's at that point this light will come on and stay on. You'll be going and using that reset button that we'd shown you. 
So stood right here, you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame. We know that tank is good. Switch on the left there, that's your water pump. Turn that on, turns on your water pump, drying out every fresh tank to pressurize your lines. And then on the side here, you've got your monitor system. So on the bottom, we get batteries. So you can see we're currently charging. Good, and then fair and low as it goes down. For your fresh tank, as you fill that up, you go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. All right, so of course this is one of your front bunks. So that would have just fold out just the same as the one in the back that we'll show you in a few minutes here. You will notice these little jacks throughout the units. Those are for these things right here. So you basically just plug them on into there and then you have this roof light assembly for that. Of course gives you the fan as well as a light and then the little clips will just hook up to the bars that hold up the uh, little tent ends right. previous owner did also leave a coax cable in here so we've left that for you as well up into the kitchen you get your microwave up top it's pretty straightforward just like home down below that we get your range vent it's the light as well as the fan there right. so this is that fan that you want turned on whenever we're running our stove just so that we can get all those fumes outside Bifold cover just flips back, take the knob over the light, hit it with a sparker. And it fires right up. And now the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the unit for a while, it will take a minute just to fire up, just because it's got to clear all the air out of the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. For the oven, you're going to grab a lighter, turn this knob on the right here over to that pilot, press and hold, and then right in the back, you can get that pilot light going. Again, just once it clears the air out of that line. There we go. So once you get that flame going, you just want to hold the knob in for another couple of seconds. Oh, it wants to let go. There we go. So like I was saying, once you get it going, hold the knob in for another couple of seconds. And then you can release the knob and the flame will hold itself. Then you're going to turn up to your desired temperature and she'll fire right up. Well, once we're done, we can turn it back down to just the pilot and hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling or leaving the trailer for a while, you just make sure it's right off. Like I showed you, there's that little bit of storage down below. And then right around the corner here, you've got your GFI protected outlets. Test on the bottom, reset up top. And then into your dinette here. So you have the emergency exit. First of all, back there, you're just taking the red handles, pulling them in, swinging that table, or sorry, the window out. A little bit of storage up top here. As well as your smoke detector here. Above my head, we've got a max fan. So you're gonna pull that knob down to unlock it, turn it to open it up. Previous owner did also install a roof fence up here. So we've left those here, of course, for you as well. In the corner, you get your speed selection. So you get your one, two, three, and four. Hit it again after four and it just comes back to one. If you wanna turn it off, just turn that fan off. And then you're gonna turn that knob and close it back down. Push it back up to lock it. You do have access to that front storage bin here as well, actually. Just point that out real quick. So your water pump and all that stuff's just down to the left. Then in the dinette, like I was saying, you're just gonna grab your table here, kind of wiggle it out of there. And then you can see, you just get the little a Velcro travel strap there. You're just gonna swing that out, swing out your table legs, lay it down. As we've got it set up right now, that is of course your little bed. So you'd be taking your back cushions, putting them in the center here to fill it in. And you have the extra bedding area. Above your sink, you do get a little light there. It's just on its own center push button. And up in the storage compartment, you will find a little pouch. So that has all of your owner's manuals for the unit. Any sort of remotes, anything like that, you'll find right in there, as well as your keys. Uh, the sink, hot and cold water, of course. So you do get the mobile head. The cover is just soft plastic, so nothing hot on it. Down below there, we get a bit more storage. Again, just be mindful of our water lines and our drains. This is kind of a return grill for your furnace, so you just make sure that's not turned off or blocked off. A bit more storage. Your fridge here, you're gonna open up the freezer and then you get controls to it here. On the left, you're gonna just press that button there, turns it on. Mode in the center, so you can see we're currently lit up on auto. So that's auto's first gonna look for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out boondocking and you solely want it running on gas, just gonna hit that mode button, it'll come into LP, it'll fire up just on gas. On the right side here, you've got your temp selection. So as it says there, you got cold through coldest. Just hit it to cycle through that. 
So that was your fridge, freezer up top, fridge down below. Down below that, we got your converter, across the top and center, she pops on open. We got all of our breakers down the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's gonna sit in the center, so just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, we get all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. You will notice throughout the unit, you kind of have these little portals here. Those are just the outlets for your furnace. And your entertainment area here real quick. So you do have your antenna up top here. You're just gonna kind of press that knob in. You can turn it, looking for your best signal. Turning that antenna on, you're gonna pull the TV out. And then right behind it here. So your antenna's right in the center there. Turning it on, just got that button there. It turns on that green light that will also help clear up your stereo signal. Above that, we've got your cable and satellite outlet. And then of course, just the power outlet beside it. For putting that TV back into place, you're just gonna push it back. And then you'll kind of hear it click. Well, you can feel it click at least. There we go. Up from there, you got your stereo, so the power button there turns it on. Really, really straightforward. The only thing I'll go through is your speaker zones. So zone one is your front set, zone two is your rear set, and zone three is your outside set. Zone three does seem to work separate from the zone one and two, so you can kind of turn it on, you have separate volume. I haven't played with it enough to be able to say those, sorry. And of course, power button, turn it back off. A bit more storage down below there. And then right around the corner, you do get a charging sender. So 12 volt outlet as well as USB outlets. A bunch more storage down here. And then we'll just do this back bunk room real quick. So you do have a little light switch there, turns on the hallway light. And then up on the wall, we do have your thermostat. So that slider all the way over to the left, that's it turned off. With that all the way over to the right, that's it turned on, max heat. Anywhere in the middle is gonna be your temp selection. And then just your temperature readout down on the bottom there. With that slider all the way over to the left, you hear it click, and that's it turned off. And then into your back bunk room here. So you're gonna get these bars here. You notice one end has a little bend in it, that's gonna be towards the middle of the trailer. You're gonna also find inside of these tent ends, you're gonna find this little bar here. So as you flip that up, there's a little black box right in the center. It has a little kind of nub in it that you're gonna line up with the end of these bars. And then you're gonna flip it up and push it out. And then on the ceiling here, you have these little claws there. You're gonna get it as tight as you can get it and just hock it into there. And then you can see that opens up your bed end. The mattress, once you have it out of the plastic, this end will flip over, kind of filling in this gap here. And then like I pointed out earlier, you have those fan light assemblies, they clip up. And then you've got your outlet up on the wall there. And the three bed ends are the all the exact same. So straight down from your thermostat, got your LP detectors, propane's heavy in there, it sits on the floor, that guy detects and starts going off just like a smoke detector. Then we'll go into the bathroom. So in here you got your light switch up on the left there, get some storage space back here. There is a toilet paper dispenser down there. Your toilet, flip that open, flushes just on the right side there. Your shower's just got the travel latch up front, just flip that up, we can open it up. Hot and cold water, standard head and hose. Above my head, you get another max fan assembly. Works the exact same as the other one we've shown you. Medicine cabinets here. And down below that, we got hot and cold water, of course. A bit more storage down below. Again, just mindful of the drains. Looks like they've blocked them off nicely. And then lastly is gonna be our air conditioner. So temp selection in the back here, you're pretty well just gonna be leaving that in full cool all the time. And then you got your knob up front. It's gonna be low fan and low fan. Then high fan, so that's just moving air. There's no cooling. Then you get into low cool, that'll turn on the compressor and cycle it in and out as needed. And then high, high cool is going to be the same thing, but using the high fan. And that's about it. You'll notice on the temp selection knob here, you do have the option for heat. That is not actually going to work. You don't have a heat pump installed because we've got a dedicated furnace. And really, that is about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call. 204-237-7272.